Good morning, good morning, good morning, WUFO audience, and welcome once again to the Great Lakes Health Radio Program. With your host this morning, Francesca Messiah from Kaleida Health. Our topic for today is Kaleida Health Long Term Care and Rehabilitation Facility called High Point at Michigan. High Point at Michigan is our newest long-term care facility in Buffalo. Now, you might be asking, what is a long-term care facility? What does all this mean? But that's why I have our guest today, who, who will explain all that for you. And our guests for today are Wendy uh, um, Andres, and when, Wendy is the Admissions Marketing Coordinator. Good morning, Wendy. Good morning, Francesca. And with her, her colleague, Paul, Paula Pless. And Paula is the Director of Safe Patient Handling, uh, work, meaning workforce safety. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome. Thank welcome, you. Ladies. Thank you. Looking forward to this exciting conversation. Um, and, 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 and just to, to set the tone for this morning, uh, Wendy and Paula, f feel free to, to, you know, chime in. But, but could you um, explain for us uh, why, why was there a need for a new long-term care facility? And what was the, you know, why did Kaleida um, build this? Well, High Point on Michigan is a new state-of-the-art subacute rehab and skilled nursing facility. We're right across the street from Buffalo General Medical Center and Gates Vascular Institute. And the reason that we opened was that the Deaconess Nursing Home and the Millard Fremore Gates Nursing Homes were closing. And so High Point opened as they were closing. And the patients um, came to High Point and the staffs were also merged from both facilities. Uh, we're located on the medical quarter, right at uh, Michigan and High Street. And and, and how many patients? Um, you, you mentioned that there was a, a merger. That there were uh, patients from Deaconess and patients from the skilled nursing at Miller Fillmore uh, Gates, which is also now closed. Both mm -hmm. facilities are no longer. Um, and how many patients were, are we speaking of? Well, right now we can accommodate 300 patients, and uh, I believe. 300 patients, it was like 240 skilled nursing beds. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I, I just, I just want, want to say, I just, I have to make a correction that, that, that there is another long-term care facility now at ECMC. Right. Yes. Um, and, and, and that's very recent. So I, I apologize. Oh, make the correction. But, and DeGraff has long-term care beds also. Our mm -hmm. DeGraff Hospital has the skilled nursing beds. Uh, I believe it's 70 beds? 80. 80 beds. And, and DeGraff is part of Kaleida Health? Right, yes. right. Okay, and where is DeGraff again? Do, so people just do It's on uh, Tremont in uh, North Tonawanda. Okay, so we have, so you, so I'm sure at all the facilities, we're able, you're able to accommodate a lot of, you know, several people and families, members from Western New York and Niagara, Niagara right. including Niagara County. Right. That is wonderful. Um, I, I, and, and I know that when we talk about long-term care, and I mentioned in the introduction, rehabilitation, um, and again, I, I'm sure many people in the audience probably may not really understand what all that means. So, and I, and, and I, I went on, and I know you have a beautiful brochure. There is a simply beautiful brochure, and, and there's a long list of the services that, that you're, that the facility provides, but if you could just name um, your top five health services. Sure. And then we'll talk about the non-health, uh -huh. you know, not as many, but, but in terms of what are your top five services that, that, that someone listening would, you know, think about coming? Sure. Well, our subacute uh, rehab provides individuals who have complex um, medical and, and rehabilitation called? needs. called again? Subacute rehab. Okay. And uh, basically, is services for individuals recovering from a variety of conditions, uh, orthopedics, you know, total joint replacements, bone fractures, sprains, arthritis, spinal injuries, might be recovering from cardiac issues. So what do you mean by arthritis? I thought arthritis, people with arthritis just, you know, normally stayed at home. It could be uh, arthritis to the point where uh, mobility is compromised and the flare-up might cause the person to need a little bit of extra um, recovery time maybe through a professional in the therapy department and in the nursing department and now if someone needed that because you just you just listed several services is it something that they would just appear at the door or is it through their doctor that they would re get referred to you 
Uh, basic, most people get referred to us through the hospital. Yeah. If they're in the hospital for a, a medical condition and oh, that okay. they need some rehab before they go back into the community. Occasionally, someone might come from home, but it's generally from the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, if, and, you know and, and not to be repetitive, but if you could just name those top five again, the top five services you just said. Well, for the subacute rehab services, it's for the people recovering from orthopedic conditions, cardiac issues, neurological conditions, general medical conditions. Cardiac issues. Uh, maybe heart attack. Uh, congestive heart failure, some type of cardiac surgery. Okay. We are um, actually expanding our subacute rehab right now with okay. our new um, subacute rehabilitation cardiac program. Uh, we're working with uh, Kaleida Health uh, Cardiac Physicians and Surgeons, and we're going to be uh, adding additional 20 beds to our subacute rehab. Oh. And uh, she mentioned neurological, and some people might refer to that as uh, stroke. Or I'm some type of brain, a, yeah, brain injury, brain event, um, loss of circulation, um, so that that the person could be um, a post-surgical or a stroke coming for rehab. And then once inside, you have, I mean, are there room like there? I mean, I, I go to the gym. So is there like a workout room? Are there physical therapists? I mean, I'm just, what does it look? You know, what does so if someone's going, if someone is there for stroke or recovering from cardiac? We have a, a state-of-the-art uh, rehab department. It's a uh, state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we have a team of 15 therapists. Oh, okay. Um, basically, uh, we have three services, our, our physical therapy, mm -hmm. our occupational therapy, and also uh, speech therapy. Um, our therapy department runs seven days a week, um, works closely with physicians to follow their protocols, to maximize uh, functional outcomes for the patients. Uh, what is, that, that's, okay, that was a medical term. You just used right there, functional outcome for the patient. <laughs> Me meaning that they can get to their the, the best state of uh, their baseline to get back into the community and lead you know their independent lives again. Mm -hmm. Now, are, are family members um, do, uh, encouraged to come and either work out or encourage them? I mean, I, I, I'm just wondering, like, if... Our family members, like if say there's a, a program, an exercise program that you're working on with the patient, and there's some exercises that maybe can be mm -hmm. done at home, are family members then encouraged to come and observe the exercises so they can do those exercises with the person at home, the loved one? There's a lot of health teaching that goes on, uh, both from the nursing staff and the physical therapy and occupational and speech therapy staff. So they work with the resident directly and they also work indirectly and directly with the family so that the return to home is seamless and the transition is to the point where the family's involved all along so they know what the expectations are there's some safety involved in it and they're also taught how to help keep that person on track so it could be a medication management oh. it could be um some type of a treatment that might have to continue after the person goes home. So there's a very uh, concerted effort in uh, health teaching while the patient is in the facility. So, so it sounds like when the person is, uh, the resident, as you're calling the patient, resident, the right? resident is discharged, it sounds like it, it's a very happy moment for the family. So yeah, celebration, to, right? Celebration. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's a yeah. graduation. It's a graduation. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I, um, now, also on, on, uh, on, on your brochure, and on the website, um, it talked about, it mentioned non-health services. And, and, and could you please describe what are some of your non-health services that, again, would, would encourage uh, someone, a, a resident, mm -hmm. to spend time at uh, High Point or Michigan? Right. Whether the uh, resident stay is long-term or short-term, the facility has a hair salon, has a bank, um, provides some financial services, there's a gift shop, uh, the activities programs are seven days a week, days and evenings. They do outings, they do campfires, they do musical programs. Outings. Oh my goodness, they go out to dinner, out to lunch, they go to shopping malls, uh, plays, ball games. A lot of things and very exciting too we have two new vans um the long-term care facility at DeGraft has a van mm -hmm. and the high point uh facility has a new van it was through a grant program i'm sorry i don't know 
the name of the grant, but okay. um, it's an excellent opportunity to get them out in a comfortable, safe way with a, a even wheelchair bound. So, and, and, and I have to say, one time when I was taking a tour at High Point, I did I, I did observe. Uh, the hairdresser putting braid extensions. Yeah. And oh yeah. His hair. Yeah. So it's a, a multicultural it's, it's, salon, and there's a barber, and uh, so yeah, it's it's a great, it's a beautiful salon too. It's very very pretty. I was wondering if I could make it a barber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, and, and another um, uh, another aspect of the building which I found simply fascinating, and 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 if you could talk about the uh, the, the the building plan for the, the personal space. I, I describe the building as, as like a, a, almost like a, a beautiful five-star hotel. Nice. Like a, you know, like an elegant film, something. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's beautiful. If, if you could just explain, um, just just tell tell us what, a little more about when you walk in, the, the, the experience that, that, it, that you have. Sure. We, um, the building was built with um, our specific specifications. We have hardwood look floors they're not non-skid and cushioned to reduce impact on joints we have flat screen tvs uh fireplaces on the units but you have flat screen tvs like in each pod each every pod room in every room in every yeah. room okay so. yeah mm -hmm. and then we have near floor to ceiling windows in the dining rooms and conversation areas uh, for a city facility we have a lot of green space mm -hmm. as well as courtyards and outdoor door patios uh, the planning committee had put a lot of thought into um, everything, the floors, the lighting. Um, we have pictures by each patient door that are night lights. And um, uh, as far as um, the patient rooms, they're very comfortable. Uh, the way the building was designed was to make every room feel like a private room with a dividing wall in a semi-private uh, setting. Each resident has their own, as we said, their own flat screen TV, a bureau, an armoire. On the subacute uh, wing, uh, the rooms have their own telephones, as well as um, they're equipped with a shower, which is uh, unique for subacute rehabs. And, but it's the kind of shower, I'm sure, that if someone is wheelchair bound or walker, they can walk into the shower. Yes, or definitely. Wheel in, or, 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 or wheel into the shower. So, you, you don't, not, so someone doesn't have to worry about their loved one accidentally tripping over the side of a shower or something like that right. and, and also I, I'm assuming that um, they're they're aids to help um, everyone in and out of the shower and oh yes definitely. And, and, and with every all the so so this way the family feel feels at, at ease knowing that they're you know they're in the best comfortable yeah, absolutely. care 24 hour care nursing staff professional license nurses uh, bedside certified Nursing assistants, certified oh, doctors on staff, yeah, colitis doctors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, uh, another part that you didn't mention, I, I, unless I unless I missed it in your description, were the areas like the um, like each unit has like a little community area at mm -hmm. the, the fireplace. Yes, right. I, 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 and, and that reminds me of like the fireplace and roasting marshmallows. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a gathering point, you know, for for the people that live on each unit and mm -hmm. for the families too. They're, they're set up like pods, so each floor is considered a neighborhood, and in fact, named after a Buffalo neighborhood. So there's it, it, Hamlin Park, Hamlin right? Park, Delaware, Allentown, Elmwood, Cold Springs, yeah, Kensington. There, it's in the Fruit Belt. Is there a Fruit yeah, Belt? Yeah, yeah. We have uh, all the neighborhoods are named for each pod. The pods are set up like neighborhoods, so they have, like you were talking about, the fireplace, a little uh, gathering living room space, a small kitchen, and the pods are broken down into smaller units so that they become more of a neighborhood feel. Um, each floor has a very large dining room, a main dining room that's uh, all glass. Like Wendy was saying, the, the view around the neighborhood is beautiful. Um, you can see all of the churches and all the steeples and all the architecture. It's just beautiful. And that neighborhood feel gives that um, higher amount of accountability for the staff and for those who they take care of. So it's, a, it's just a really nice feel. Now, now, it, now, if someone's loved one is in the hospital, and they're getting ready to be discharged, or they, or they, you know, the nurse, ha nurse manager, and the discharge planner um, has already begun speaking with the family about that. Can they come and tour 
your facility uh, and who would they call if you could sure. say, say the number a couple of times sure they are welcome to come tour at any time who would they ask for uh, if they ask at the front desk and tell, tell the front desk that they're here for a tour myself if I'm in the facility I would do the tour or one of our other staff would um, they can call us and set an appointment or can come in 24 7 and, and have a tour uh, the best phone number to call is 748-3165. It's 748-3165. And you're located at the at Michigan and High, the corner Michigan of Michigan High. and High. The address is uh, 1031 Michigan Avenue. And, and, and I know you just said you can come in at any time, but do you really mean that? <laughs> Two in the morning? Well, <laughs> Some people get off work at different hours. So I mean, <laughs> well, we do have a nursing supervisor that could give a tour, you know, if, if needed uh, then. But and what are your preferred times at someone? The preferred times would pretty much be between 8 in the morning and, and 7, 8 in the evening. Okay. So and the facility is more functioning then. You know, if they come at 2 in the morning, a lot of the residents are sleeping. There's not much activities going on, of course. Mm -hmm. So to kind of get a, a full flavor of it, you know, it would be better to come during the, the daytime hours. People are also certainly welcome on the weekends. Oh, the weekends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and just and just one more thing before, before we move on to the next question. Um, I just want to mention that I believe when you walk in the door that the tables and you walk through the door to the right, they have checkers on mm -hmm. top. They're like permanent, kind of like, it reminds me of in, in New York City where you go into different parks and yeah. Central Park and such, and they have like the, the table is already designed. Like, so you have that, isn't that? Yeah, like a little lounge area, you know, that people gather or if someone's waiting to see somebody. And you can bring your check. Is it checkers or is it chess? That it's checkers. It's checkers. checkers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even little ones. Yeah. Um, now, many people, uh, I mean, many people, including um, elderly, all people, are accustomed to attending religious services on Saturday or Sunday or, or daily. And how does High Point accommodate the religious requests? Uh, we offer a variety of religious services to meet the needs of all our residents and we are aware of the diverse population that we serve and we respect everyone's right to their religious choices. We offer Catholic Mass weekly along with non-denominational services every Sunday. We have chaplains and deacons that come make one-to-one -one room visits for our residents. We offer communion if anyone requests that. Uh, we have a chaplain that's available for prayer and personal concerns. We have uh, Baptist services on Wednesday evenings oh, nice. that include songs and um, Bible studies and rosary groups. Do you and have a choir? Is there a high point choir? You know, there isn't. No. no. <laughs> We're going to have to get Katie on there. I, Katie bet, you, I, bet, I bet you a lot of great voices. Oh, yeah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Um, they are able to meet the needs of the residents, religious needs, really over a 24-hour period. So if there was any event that was going on, they could contact somebody. Right, and, and I know this is Passover season, so is there a rabbi, you know, to also come in? Or you yes. can make a call. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, and because we're, you know, the holidays yeah, season right, right. now. <laughs> um, well, well, thank you. And I know, and I know we, we, before we started, we, we talked about uh, ministers, you know, pastors visiting and again people i mean pa pastors can visit and and spend time with the loved ones in their sure. congregation right when they want right you could bring in your own yeah. family could yeah, no appointment <laughs> right exactly <laughs> <laughs> okay now um something else that i know it came up in, in another show another uh, program um we when we were talking about health care proxies we've never really talked that much about them um, it, it's also come up on the um, uh, radio. I know a couple of things have come up, not with Kaleida, mm -hmm. but just in general. Mm -hmm. You just hear that that, top, that, that right. phrase quite a bit. And now, are patients required to have a health care proxy on file? However, if you could first describe briefly what, uh, you know, what is a health care proxy? Um, a proxy is an individual that's selected by the resident, um, assigned to make medical decisions on that person's behalf in the event they're not able to make their own decisions. Now, if they sign that uh, form, that paper, in the hospital for someone to make their decision, however, now they're in at High Point, um, do they have to sign another form or is that one still good? 
it carries over. Oh, it does carry yeah, over. It carries over, and it's it's not you don't it's not um, it's recommended that you have one, and we encourage people to have one on file. And it is a very important document. It's um, something that our social work department can help a resident and family with, mm -hmm. and help the family member with for themselves. Um, those advanced directives are respected, and okay. we follow them as a high priority. An advanced directive is. The same kind of um, language documenting what your wishes are and who you're appointing to follow through on those wishes. So your wishes really you're saying it in, could be in case of what? It could be um, a medical decision that needs to be made at a time where you're unable to make that decision. So it's documented about those, um, whether you're going to be intubated or not or a tube feeding or not, those types of things. Mm -hmm. uh, Life-sustaining. But, but it's not necessary, but I know a lot of people are, a lot of medical facilities in general. Right. Even clinics. I right. would like that yeah. to happen it, in case it's something smart. happens. It's smart. You're, yeah. you've, you've discussed it with somebody you love and trust, and they know and can represent you. So, it, therefore, it doesn't have to be a family member. Right. It's someone, like you just said, who you love and trust. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, now, how does High Point work with other colitis sites. We talked about hospital. Um, how, could you just explain how it works, how, how the process? Sure. Well, you know, as we mentioned, we're located on the medical campus with Buffalo General Medical Center and the Gates Vascular Institute uh, facility, rather. And so the um, uh, patients have immediate access to a variety of the tertiary me uh, uh, medical services uh, from, what, from the hospital. You said tertiary medical any of the specialized services, okay. you know, at the, the hospital or the Gates Vascular Institute. The um, doctors and providers can literally walk across the street to see their patients if, if they, you know, so choose to do so. Uh, we also have access to the electronic medical record at the Collida facilities. So if a patient comes to us, uh, we have the, the background information. Uh, when patients are discharging, we can refer them, if they need services at home, to the VNA, which is part of Polida, the Visiting Nurses Association. And um, so, it's like, so basically, I mean, I, I didn't, I, you just, it's, like, it's like a continuum of care. So you right. can, so right. if you're a Buffalo General, um, you, it used to be called Buffalo General Hospital. The new, uh, the new name is Buffalo General Medical Center. Or if you're at Gates Vascular, or Miller Fillmore Suburban, or DeGraff, something happens, you can, uh, and your doctor recommends for you to go to High Point, you and the right. family decide that. And then upon your celebration of discharge, then the Kaleida Visiting Nurses Association can then begin working with you at, at home. If, 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 right. if, 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 if you need that. There's, right. If, if you need that. It, it's very exciting. It's a, um, being on that medical corridor has uh, given the opportunity for such quick access to the professionals. And our colleagues often come over, like Wendy was saying, to collaborate and to assist with the uh, progress of a patient. Um, we've had where we could just pick up a phone and call someone uh, from the medical uh, campus next door and we can get what we need. Uh, very quickly, which is a really nice way of, like you were saying, continuum of care. It's, and it's just, a, it's like a, <laughs> what you, the campus is like in Cleveland and in Rochester. Or, or it's like some schools, like some schools, yeah. you have the yeah. elementary school, yes. the middle school, yeah. and the high school, and you, and it's all connected. Right. You know, right. Di di different principals, different administrators, mm -hmm. however part of the same right. system. Yeah. And, and something else I, I just want to mention is that um, in terms of, of transportation, that if, if a loved one is is is, is visiting, you're you're very accessible. You're on the the bus line. You're mm -hmm. on the the subway line. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's it's a couple of blocks from from the both. The, you know, if you're getting off at Main Street, but I know there's a Michigan, but you know, yes, uh, um, uh, uh, bus. So so it's very accessible. And I also want to mention. That's huge parking lot. Yes, and it's <laughs> free parking. It's free parking. Right. You could almost decorate a float. That is a large. You can put you can put a Rose Bowl or a Juneteenth Day Parade float in that in your parking lot. It's <laughs> it, it's large. Well, we're I, I know we're winding down, but I just want to get a few more questions. And how about security? Some people are, would say, oh, it's not secure. If you could just explain it. I know we had. 
Tim, our, our, our security mm -hmm. um, uh, manager on the show two weeks ago, but if you could just talk sure. a little bit about patient sure. safety and security. Well, this, the uh, facility is very secure, and there are many measures in place to ensure the safety for everyone, visitors, staff, and uh, the residents that live there. There's cameras strategically placed throughout the entire facility, outside and inside. It monitors all um, doorways and limited access and limited doorways. And I just want to say, also with security, there's cameras throughout the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. So right. as you're walking, if you're visiting someone, That's while right. you're walking down High Street, there's security. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. there, there's, um, that type of security can be done even in an escort, like you're saying, yes. into that neighborhood. Oh, no, so they, they can call. Yeah, they can call for an escort from security. Mm -hmm. um, we have an elopement uh, system in place. Elopement is um, the leaving of a resident that isn't desired. So it's somebody who needs to be protected, who cannot be outside of the building. We have electronic uh, devices that help alert us when they're in a certain area or by a certain doorway. So it's extremely safe. Um, to reduce that risk of a, a patient leaving the building that you don't want to leave. And like you said, there's many cameras in the neighborhood too, so mm -hmm. it's a safe walk from one medical building to another. And, and I just want to stress the, the point, the fact that if someone is visiting someone, a uh, loved one, and it's like 9 o'clock, 8.30 at night, the 8 is say 8.50, because right. I know you, you probably have visiting hours, uh, you know, when, when, when you encourage pa pa the visitor to leave so the patient can rest, uh, there is, they can call the the uh, security uh, within the uh, Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus system yes. and get a ride to the subway. Right. Yeah, they're 24-7. The and they have a big hub right there with the security watching the whole area on camera. Mm -hmm. On uh, 1028 Main Street, they have the big uh, security office building with all the cameras and the views of all the buildings so it's and, and, and something else we, we, I just want to make sure the audience uh, has heard is that we talk about um, a lot of times you have patients with Alzheimer's right in the building and different levels of care and uh, what's the protection so they don't so they won't walk out you right. hear about that right you know the uh, any patient, whether they have dementia or not, if dementia. they've been um, assessed at risk for elopement or leaving the building where you wouldn't want them to, they have a electronic uh, alarm system okay. on them, and so our doors lock automatically if they come within range of them. So they have the autonomy to be free in the building, and then protected from leaving the building. Okay. So it's a it's an assessment by our team. Okay. of who needs that. Well, I just want to give a little re recap uh, of the services provided at long-term. You have short-term care, right? and that's if someone has had made a stroke or heart mm -hmm. attack and only needs short-term for rehabilitation. Right. You have long-term care for that person who can't return home. However, you can the environment's very home-friendly and right. you can visit, you can bring your own pastor, you can bring members of the congregation. Right. We have a ventilator unit. A ventilator unit. A 10-bed ventilator unit. We have a pediatric unit. Right, the shaken baby. Is it the called the shaken babies? Uh, we have, uh, for various reasons, for why various a reasons. pediatric child may need long-term care, and some do rehab and go back home. Oh, oh right. and uh, I don't think there's another one in New York State. I think near Albany, I believe. So it's uh, and then then you also have services for patients w or re residents. Sorry, residents with de dementia. Right, we have a dementia care unit. Um, that unit is a locked safe unit where the residents are able to ambulate freely right. and be safe. And age doesn't matter. I just want one more time for the phone number because we are out of time. Seven four eight three one six five. So, okay, thank you so much. I just want to say that uh, th thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. And um, next week you will hear from our, our host from ECMC, Rita Hubbard Robinson, with another exciting topic. And I'll be back, God be willing, in, in two weeks, and we'll be talking about lead prevention. And I just want to say have a very blessed day, and thank you. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Wendy, for talking about High Point. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to Great Lakes Health with Kaleida and Francesca Messiah. We invite you to join us next Wednesday and every minute Wednesday for Great Lakes Health right here on The Mix, 1080 AM WUFO.